Hey there, welcome back for today's video. I am really excited because we are going to be talking about the differences between using list statuses versus custom fields inside of ClickUp. So if you've been wondering what's the difference and why would you use one or the other or how you can use one or the other inside of your platform, definitely stick around for today's video. I'm gonna take you through how you can use them. If you are new to ClickUp and you are still trying to figure out what this platform is all about, check out my video, ClickUp for Beginners, where you'll be able to get more insight into ClickUp as an overall platform. So let's dive in. Okay, so I am bringing you into the background and you are inside of my very own ClickUp. I've opened up a list, which is a task list. So you can see that we are going to start walking through the differences between what statuses are versus custom fields, how and why you would use custom fields. And I think this is an area where people can get very confused. So first things first, your lists inside of ClickUp are housed either in folders or independently within the space itself. And so this list is my platform management list. This is where I come when I want to make any tweaks to anything or set up new platforms in the background in my own business. So we've got some tasks here that I've put um, down and you can see that there is a split between what's open versus what's in progress. Now, each list that you use or open up inside of ClickUp, is assigned a list status. And you're able to find this list if you hover over the actual list itself, you've got three dots. This is your ClickUp menu, it follows you everywhere you go. You'll see down below you have list statuses. Now your status is how you track the progress of your task or how you categorize your task. My recommendation is always to keep your list statuses as simple as possible, especially if you're using them across the board inside of your ClickUp. What I am going to do is actually bring these in line. So all below are, these are all of my templated statuses and it looks quite extensive, but I have them for different reasons, different purposes. And what I want to do is use a very standard status. So I'm going to actually select my client task. This is actually a status that I use across the board in most of my lists, the majority of my lists. So it brings up a prompt and asks me to reselect where my tasks should go. So when you change your statuses in ClickUp, you go from old status to new status. So I'm going to put all of my open tasks into to do. That is a status that we use across the board in my business. So you see here how the statuses have just been updated. So there's different ways that you can group your tasks. And at the top, we are grouping tasks via the status. So this is a way that you you can categorize your tasks, but you can also see how you can group your tasks in different ways. And we'll cover that in a different video. So the next way that you can manage your tasks is using custom fields. Now, here you can see I'm hovering over a plus button, which is add a new column. And this is where you can pull up your custom fields. So any custom fields that you create inside of ClickUp goes into what they call a custom field library. So I have fields already created and I can say use fields for my library. These are all of the different types of custom fields that I have personally created in my ClickUp workspace. So if I was to select drop down, for example, it tells me what the name of these fields are and how many places this field itself has been used. So I could go through and you'll see that I have a number of fields which says status. That's because I've switched between using a status field field in the custom fields as opposed to using the status inside of the list status view. So I won't confuse you too much as to why. So let's just select um, or create a new custom field and you'll be able to see what the difference is with that. So perhaps we just want to set up a tag. So what we can do is go to add new and I want to categorize my tasks in this list so that I know what type of a project this is going to be related to. So I'm going to set up a label and I'm just going to call that categories and what we'll do is we'll label it so I can see here we've got funnels, click up pre-work, team onboarding so I'm going to break this down into different categories and I'm going to call it marketing, 
um, clients and let's see what we have here. Let's say team. And with the fields, you can also cut, um, cut, color code them as well. With the tags, it's great because the colors do stand out. So you're able to see what the labels are. And then what I can do is start to assign each task to a category. So if we were to pop this into the client category, or actually let's pop this into marketing as it's guest expert, and we'll pop this one into marketing, pop this into client. So I'm just going to break all of these into their various areas. And that will work perfect. So now we have custom fields attached to every single task. And so you can see now that we have broken our tasks down based on the status that the task is in. And so what the status does is it starts to organize your tasks into different ways. So if you want to know, well, what are the tasks that are in review? You can see what that is, but you can also see what the categories are. Now, if you wanted to do, you could also switch up how you group your tasks together. So the custom fields could be grouped via the categories. So if I just want to see all of my client related tasks, marketing related tasks, team related tasks, I can do. And then I can add a column where actually I want to see the status in this column. So I don't need to create a new custom field in this area. Instead, I can actually select status and it will pull in the list status here. So it will actually allow me to see what's to do, what's in progress, what's in review. So the difference between list statuses is that essentially they break down the status of your tasks, where your tasks are at, or what stages your projects are at. And then you can use your custom fields to add in more detail. So you can start to break down the categories that you want to attach to each task. So if you have further stages that you all also want to add on to each task, then you can do that as well. So I want to show you an example of this in a project broken down into phases. Okay, so we are inside of a different list and this is a project broken down into phases. So this is actually a templated list for setting up a Dubsado setup. So as you can see, we have all the phases of each project. We have phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. Okay, now these phases are actually list statuses in this particular task list. So if I head over to the list statuses, you'll see that these are all different stages inside of this particular project. So we're doing it this way. And so within each stage, we are kind of categorizing the task differently. So the reason why we're doing it this way is so we can still see the status in play. And there really is no right or wrong rule. You can switch this around and have your phases as a custom field if you want. But for this particular project, the reason why we like to have the statuses is you'll notice that the tasks are also categorized in this way as well. So if you have a look at the task, each status will show next to the task. So if you want to actually know and define your task itself by the list status, that will always show here. So in this case, it works better for us to use the phases of the project as the list status and then have the actual task status of whether it's ready to start in progress and ready to do and we keep the status as a custom field and we manage it that way. So you'll see that we are grouping this list by statuses. However, if you also want to use a board view, this again is another way for you to keep a track of statuses, but you might also decide that you want to structure your board view as a workflow view. So you might say, let's pop everything into the status stage. So you want to say what's actually in progress, what's pause, what's in review, what's actually completed, and then you can move tasks along. So that's a really quick fire way of just seeing the differences between using list statuses versus custom fields inside of ClickUp. Hopefully that gives you some insight and gives you some ways of how you can organize and categorize your tasks inside of ClickUp. It's a very quick video. So if you do have questions, feel free to drop them below. And if you have other videos that you would love to see on this topic, again, please do let me know and I can get those together for you. If you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure that you 
please hit subscribe and drop a comment or a like. Your support on this channel means the absolute world to me. And you can also come and join us in the She Talk Systems Facebook group where we talk all about using Dubsado and ClickUp inside of your business as a service provider. Until next time, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.